Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about tire gardens. Are they toxic? Here's the case for and the case against. I posted a video on how to make instant tire gardens and I shared it with my newsletter about a month ago. And in response, one of my readers wrote, Hello David, tires do leach toxic carcinogenic chemicals into the soil and plants grown in them. No time to research this? Then do not show pictures of plants grown in tires. That is irresponsible and bad karma as you pass on injury to others. Look into it. Fact. Tire gardening and straw bale gardening are bad if you do not want toxin suffused vegetables. Okay, that's legit. Look into it. Basically, I threw the tire garden thing out there and said, I don't know if this is bad for you or not. So take it or leave it. And as for straw bales, I had a run in with Mr. Joel Karsten, the uh, straw bale gardener, where he was very nasty to me online like a year ago over an article I wrote. And, uh, and so people know, people know that I've got, you know, I've got like that beef going on or whatever it is. But along those same lines of tire gardening, I got another email. Sheila writes, one year my father and I planted potatoes in tires. Just put on another tire and add dirt. We had lots of potatoes with seven high with a PVC pipe with holes in it to water the plants. Problem was, the potatoes tasted like tires. Since then, I am not a fan of tires for living or gardening. Hmm, potatoes that taste like tires and bad karma. <sighs> Makes you just want to give up, doesn't it? I mean, you take all the time to cut the side out of a tire and show it on YouTube and then people tell you you're a terrible person. And I don't actually care about tire gardens. I really could care less. Um, I, I like the idea of recycling and reusing something that would have been thrown away, but I just don't really care that much about tire gardens in general. I would rather dig a bed. So, the question is, though, since that's the point of this video, are tire gardens toxic? A couple of years ago, I went to Echo. Echo is famous around the world for the research that they've done and they have a section on urban gardening where they use tires. And you've seen tires probably in all kinds of places. I mean, they're, they're readily available and they create an instant raised bed. And so there are benefits to using tires. First of all, you're getting waste out of the waste stream. Instead of it being thrown away, you're using something. Instead of going and buying wood to make a raised bed garden or something like that, you're using something that already exists. So there's a case to be made that in some circumstances, throwing tires down and getting up over a hard soil, a lousy soil, a rocky soil, a toxic soil, or whatever else, put some good dirt in there and grow. Maybe you're working on a rooftop or a driveway, you know, like Echo is doing with their urban gardens. You say, hey, there's a useful thing. There's also a website, Rural Revolution, and Patrice writes over at Rural Revolution and uh, she writes all over the place. But somebody got on her case for the tractor tire gardens they were building. They had terrible soil, they had all kinds of problems, and they decided, let's just go up and reuse some tractor tires. And somebody wrote, you could have created a floral landscape, a Dutch masterpiece, an English rose garden, a French formal garden, and you chose Fordsville, Michelin Man, and polluted Mother Earth. Scrap timber is everywhere, so are bricks, tiles, and even rockery stones, but tires, no. Are you sure the food grown will be free of carbon, rubber, tire, oil, moisture? A carcinogen? I don't really know exactly the, the, the chain of thought there. But Patrice wrote back and she kind of, the phrase that boils it down to, she said, tires have a lot of nasty things bonded into them, things that are arguably carcinogenic, but it's the term bonded that must be considered. Intact tires are distressingly inert. That's why they're everywhere rather than quietly decomposing into Mother Earth. She then does a lot of quotations from a Mr. Farber of a website which is unfortunately now offline, tirecrafting.com, which went over to an Etsy site, so you can't read his original uh, essay on it. But what he wrote was, used tires already exist and in their solid state they are safe or safer than any other construction material. The process and the result of this global discard nightmare being recycled by industry, whether they're grinding them up for road base, burning them as fuel, or recouping the oil, 
releases more hydrocarbons while costing the global economy billions of dollars for tire cleanup and commercial recycling. Modifying tires to create green space and home gardening available to everyone would not only absorb hydrocarbons, it could well be the key to salvation for practically every family on the planet that is otherwise excluded from adequate sustenance. Personal tire recycling potential benefits far outweigh all perceived hazards. But as for me, I'm not convinced. Let's take a look at the negatives. According to Brighton Permaculture Trust, this is contained in a typical tire. Natural rubber, synthetic rubber compounds including butadiene, a known carcinogen, solvents, benzene, a known carcinogen, styrene, anticipated to be a carcinogen, tooling has negative health effects, xylene, which is an irritant, and petroleum naphtha. Polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, phenols, some are endocrine disruptive, Benzop benzopyrene, I can't even say these words, that's how scary they are. It's linked to cancer, heavy metals, zinc, chromium, nickel, lead, copper, cadmium, carbon black, which is possibly carcinogenic, vulcanizing agents, including sulfur and zinc oxide, which, who cares about that, polychlorinated biphenyls, known carcinogen, and other synthetic chemicals. Now, some of these things could be inert, bound up in the tire, and maybe they are, maybe they're not going to leach out, but maybe they will leach out. And when you put it in your garden, who knows? It's going to break down over time, possibly. And in that same article, uh, he argues, when it comes to growing food in tires, why take the risk? Whilst the quantity of toxic chemicals may be small, we don't know the exact amount used in tires because of commercial secrecy. People generally grow food organically for themselves to avoid exposure to synthetic chemicals. It seems ironic that a permaculture way of reusing tires could be unintentionally reintroducing potentially harmful chemicals back into the equation. And over at Science Daily, it gets scarier. Draper's method has been to make up clean samples of water, like those inhabited by several kinds of aquatic organisms, algae, duckweed, daphnia, water fleas, fathead minnows and snails, and under controlled laboratory conditions, put finely ground tire particles into the samples. By letting the, par by letting the particles remain in the water for 10 days and then filtering them out, she created a leachate that included substances in the tire rubber. All the organisms exposed to the leachate died, and the algae died fairly quickly. That's not complete tires, of course. That's just ground up tires. But do you really want it in your garden? Now, somebody argued in the comments of my post that things obviously breed in tires. And we were told not to leave tires around because mosquitoes will breed in them and algae grows in them and, you know, that sort of thing. Bugs get into the tires. So they may not be that toxic in their non ground up state and there's plenty of water by the sides of the road where there's probably tire dust falling in it every day that has all kinds of stuff growing in it. But how safe is it for your garden? It's really hard to say. And after doing some more research and reading what some smart people had to say, I tend to just fall on the side of, let's just leave the tires out. We could dig garden beds, we can use rocks, you know, not gonna bother with tires and, you know, the idea of throwing something out there that might be putting nasty stuff into my food just isn't really all that appealing. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments. And until next time, may your thumbs always be green. I went to see David, David the Good. We listened to Portis Head and drank spiced rum. Outside. Outside.